You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. I want to talk about something I've talked about before, but the title of this episode, obviously, is Living Your Unlimited Potential, Really. Now, what I mean by that, and this is going to be a longer intro, what I mean by that is in an earlier episode, which we're going to replay here today, I talk about living your unlimited potential, but not like most people think about it. You hear people saying things like, you know, live your unlimited potential, your full potential, get a PhD, start a company, do this, do that, make all this money, buy the big the big house and all these kinds of things. And none of those things are really about your unlimited potential. They come from your potential, but your unlimited potential comes from one of the most powerful ways that you can be. And that is silent, silencing your mind, quieting your mind. Now, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know that my brother-in-law is a shaman, and I obviously have worked with a shaman for a lot of years, over two and a half decades. And one of the first things that he got me started on was this, silence, quieting the mind. Because see, when it comes to your potential, let's look at your potential as a cosmic being, not a human doing, somebody who goes out and does things, but as a cosmic being and a human being. And the most powerful way that you can be is be silent. Because when you're silent, then you can hear, metaphorically speaking, with your sixth sense, your highest you know, your higher sense, where your where your inner knowing, where your higher mind comes in. And you can only actually, you can only hear in the silence when you silence your mind. So in this episode, being fully transparent, you may or may not know I've been moving now for months and I've been in the rental and my house will be done soon. And I'm still, uh, life is still chaotic. I have things all over the place and I wanted to start new episodes that I'm not there yet. I've got a whole list I want to start. But in thinking about an encore episode again this week, I really wanted to add this new introduction because I see so many people thinking, yep, or I see them going, yep, yep, Jim, I get it. Oh, you know what, dude, it all makes sense. Yep, I forget it. Turn the the podcast off. And they've forgotten about it. And they, they go through their entire lives with all this head chatter and all this noise and talking to themselves and talking to themselves and talking to themselves in ways they talk themselves out of things. And they can't hear. And when they can't hear, they can't hear the higher wisdom coming through them. So that's why, again, I wanted to replay this episode. So take your time with this episode. Listen, truly get silent, get quiet, and listen. Now, what I wanted to point out also, I'm not sure if I'd mention this because the episode on silence is probably a year and a half old. But something, when people say, well, Jim, what does it feel like? How do I silence my mind? Let me, let me give you an example. Have you ever, ever had like a clicking in your house or a noise or a humming or something? And you're like, where? Where is that coming from? I mean, come on. I mean, where is this noise? And then what you do is you shut all of your senses down and you get very quiet, very quiet. And it's kind of like you put all of your effort into hearing what you cannot hear. And when you can do that, that is the silence. Take note, again, when you're listening for what you cannot hear, you put all of your attention on the silence, and that's when you can hear. As, you know, as, as oxymoronic as it sounds, when you actually, again, put all of your attention on hearing what you cannot hear, that's when you're silent, you know, your mind is silent. And that's when you can hear. And what you want to do is you want to practice that and string the silence together. So now it's not one second or two, it's three or four or five and longer and longer and longer periods of silence. And that, my friend, literally is unlimited potential, and your greatest power. Enjoy this episode, because quite literally, when you embrace, and when you come to experience the silence, then, and only then, 
Are you living your unlimited potential? Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you over on the full episode. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, like every episode, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get right to it. I'm going to share with you in this episode how to truly live from your highest potential. And the benefit for you is that when you live from your highest potential, an immediate benefit for you is that you can then access answers that you want in life. You know, look at your own life and think about how many times you haven't taken action or you haven't done something because you don't have the answers that you want. And people want answers about, you know, what job should I take? What product should I, should I launch? You know, should I move? Should I not move? Should I get married? Should we have kids? You know, is this the right relationship for me? Well, many times people don't take action because they don't have the answers in their mind and they don't do anything at all. And then because they don't have the answers in their mind and they don't do anything at all, then what many people do is they stay lost for a lifetime, never taking any action. So I'm going to start this podcast and I'm going to tell you how to live from your fullest potential. Are you ready? Because here's the answer. Ready? The answer is this. All right. Did you see the answer? And, you know, you're listening and you're probably thinking, Jim, what, why, you know, what answer is there? When I said I'm going to tell you how to live from your fullest potential, and I said the answer is this. What I want you to notice is that you were hanging. When I said the answer is this, you were hanging in the space between each of the words. In that moment, and here truly is the answer, in that moment, you were in the silence. Silence. When you are in silence of mind, that is when you are living your fullest potential. When you can fully silence your mind, then and only then are you living from the highest possible place and beingness in your being. The biggest mistake that a lot of people make and all these rah-rah motivators and, you know, these people talking about and screaming, live your highest potential, is that most people think that your, your external environment is a reflection of your highest potential. You know, meaning go out and impact the world and, and go move a lot of people or start this company or buy this house or live in that neighborhood. And when you do all of that, you're living your fullest potential. Well, what I want to share with you is living your fullest potential has 100% absolutely nothing to do with your external world. It has everything to do with your internal world and living your fullest potential and living in silence is all internal. Here's something. If you want to become truly powerful as a being, I request and I want you to understand when you start using your silence, your silence of mind, you become a very powerful being. Okay. So, you know, where did I learn all this and, and, you know, what's causing me to bring this to you? Well, my sister, my younger sister, her husband is a shaman, which I will explain in just a moment. And I have been a shaman's apprentice for 24 years. Now, shamanism and shamans, shamans are 
they can be traced back by anthropologists about 70,000 years, all the way back to Siberia. Um, the word shamanism means one who can see in the dark, basically one who can see what other people cannot see. In the Mayan time, the shamans were the advisors to the kings. In Native American times, they were known as the medicine men and tribes. They're known as healers, seers, medicine men, and many times even as spiritual masters. I do want to point out also that shamans can also work in the light or the darkness. Uh, my brother-in-law works purely in the light, meaning he, he works for good, he works for healing, he works for the involvement of self, uh, the involvement of others, and the healing of the planet. Now, I have apprenticed with him for 24 years, and I'm going to be bringing a heavy dose of that ancient wisdom into this podcast for you guys. Why? Because it can help you transform your life at profound and deep levels. But let's start here in this episode. So when I started with him very early on, and it might have even been day number one, he said to me, he said, you have to learn to master your silence. And I want to point out also, and you might have heard of some of this before, but not only is he a shaman, but he's also a sorcerer. And a sorcerer basically is one who goes to the source, the divine infiniteness, the, co you know, the, co the cosmos. This is where he gets his wisdom and his information. He would be like a wizard, um, a babalao, and, and much more. As a matter of fact, let me add here very quickly, someone once said to me after they had met him and they'd worked with him for a little while, if you told me that someone like him existed, I wouldn't believe you. Um, this day and age, people come from all over the world for healing and personal evolution of self. Um, they come to learn to, to, to open up and to function from higher levels of consciousness and basically how to evolve and grow. And my point here is not to be dogmatic in any way. I don't want you to believe anything. I'm not trying to force anything on you. I'm actually shamanism. The, the way of shamanism is to get you to stop believing everything because most of what you believe is not true. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing in this podcast is like a corn husk shucking away, you know, uh, the corn husk so that we get to the center and the true essence of what you really are. So this episode, we're going to talk about silence and how you can actually use silence to achieve your highest potential and to start getting the answers that you want. You know, Rumi once said a couple of quotes here and a couple of places to look As Rumi said, the quieter you become, the more you can hear. In Zen, they say that the space is, meet, is made between the notes. And what I've learned is that the masters, um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use the word spiritual, and I don't mean that again in any kind of dogmatic way. It's just a word that I'm using. I'd actually even prefer to use the word cosmology because we are cosmic beings. Um, like I said in an earlier episode somewhere, is that who were you before you got to this planet? So the masters and the spiritual masters, they teach in the silence. And that means that we have, to, we have to learn to get quiet in the mind. Because when you get quiet in the mind, not the external world, but quiet in the mind, now you can hear. And in this place is where you truly become alive. Many years ago, and we used to do, actually, I'm recording this on the spring equinox. And many years ago with my brother-in-law, we used to travel to power, uh, power spots on the planet and do ceremony at the spring equinox. My family has literally been inside Cheops, you know, the Great Pyramid, for two nights unsupervised. We have been in Teotihuacan and, and Palenque and Machu Picchu and Haleakala and Chaco Canyon and many other power spots on the planet. And many years ago when we were going to Machu Picchu, he said to me, one of the first things he said is, I'm going to be in my silence that entire trip, and I'm also asking you to be in your silence that entire trip, which was 16 days. So what's interesting is I want to point out also, there are also which we'll talk about here, there are layers of silence. You know, many people think of silence as the external world, the world around you right now, whatever you're doing, looking out your window, in your car, at the office, you know, maybe you're, you're listening to this at, at the gym. I don't know. But that's external. 
And that's the external world. And people think, well, I want to silence my external world. But then we also have the internal silence, which means quite, which, which we're going to talk about, which means quieting the internal mind. And, and then there are levels below that, which I'm still, you know, learning myself. When I was on vacation with my brother-in-law last year, he was having me do some things and I got very quiet in my mind. And when I thought I was in silence, he looked at me and said, now double your silence even more. And what I did not do is start saying to myself, well, what does that mean? Double my silence even more, because then I would have no longer been in silence. I'm going to make this very practical for you, you know, in our time together. So just stay with me. In shamanism, I read something, and again, I'm not trying to impress anything upon you. I'm just trying to get you. My intention is to open your mind and to start thinking of much higher levels in our time together. And something that was said once is this, is stopping the internal dialogue is the most important act an apprentice must accomplish. And I'm going to say that to you also, is that when you stop the internal dialogue, which we're going to dig into in a minute. When you stop that, you become so much more powerful. Because see, when you stop the internal dialogue or observe it and put it to the side and you're not caught in it, in that moment, you have created silence of mind. And that is where the answers come. Now, let me put it in a way that you may be familiar. Is when you get in the silence, that's when we open up the sixth sense the higher sense. Often with my brother-in-law, he has said for years, he has said to me, is use your sense. So, and I don't mean common sense, I mean higher sense, your sixth sense. And you'll find if you choose to learn this and practice this, you will find that when you're using your higher sense, life starts to open up for you. And the reason why is because you'll begin, you'll start feeling people, you will start sensing people. You will know what's in their heart. You can tell, and I don't mean like cold reading and I don't mean verbatim, but you'll know what's going through people's mind and you can start sensing what people's motives are and the kind of energy they carry with them. But beyond that, you'll start actually operating in ways that the answers will come to you. Why? Because you're out of your internal dialogue and now you're in the quietness of mind. And in the quietness of mind, that is where the answers come. So I'd mentioned different kinds of silence. Let's look at external silence for a moment. It, it was a couple of years ago when I was sitting at a restaurant. I was sitting outside and it, it was maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a mile from the tollway. And I think pretty much all of our cities we live in have tollways. And it was near the tollway. And I was sitting outside and you could hear the, the humming of all the traffic and the crossroad traffic and everything else. And they were playing music and there were a lot of people sitting outside and I looked around and my thought to myself was this, wow, this is really a noisy environment and no one recognizes it. They're not even aware. They're not even aware how noisy it is because human beings have become, we have become anesthetized to the noise around us. And that everyone around me is completely oblivious. And for me, even in this external environment, it was quite literally to give you a metaphor of somebody standing next to you and they've got, you know, they have a wooden spoon and they're banging on, a, you know, some pots and pans, quite annoying. And I'm very sensitive to that. And you can become very sensitive to that. But most people have become anesthetized to the noise around them. So when I say silence, I don't mean just sitting in a quiet room. I mean, which we're going to go into next quieting your mind. All right, quieting your mind. One of the easiest ways to do that is to, and by the way, I hope you noticed that's all internal. One of the easiest ways to do that is to calm your mind. Notice right now, as you're even listening to me, is that you're going through all kind of dialogue in your mind. That is not a quiet mind. A quiet mind is being able to listen. And here's the conundrum being able to listen without listening in that you hear what is being said. And we're not going to go that air quote deep in this particular episode, but I want to get you to start thinking, you know, thinking about this. So I want you to look at a couple of things here. 
when you're worrying, worry, 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 bills, 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 money, 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 health, 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 uh, relationship, all these kind of things. What I want you to notice is I want you to notice how noisy your mind is. Notice that. Take a step back and look at that for a moment. Look at all that chatter. And it's like, you know, the metaphor that I use is if you go to the zoo or you're out, you know, somewhere in nature where there are monkeys, like in the jungles. And if you stand there and, you know, like places like I've been in some of the jungles in South America, etc., you stand there and you can hear the monkeys chattering in the trees. And you've got one tree that's full of monkeys and you've got a secondary tree and all the monkeys are chattering. Well, that's how many people live is they've got all these monkeys in their mind. They've got these trees. They've got these jungles, metaphorically speaking, of monkeys in their mind. And it's just chatter, 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 noise, 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 chatter, chatter, worry, chatter, worry, chatter, past, present, past, future, worry, worry, worry. Even by me just doing what I did, how much of that do you get into in your own mind? And that's all Literally, that is stopping you from living your highest potential because all that chatter, all that noise is getting in your way and it's stopping you from your, your ability to hear, to hear in the silence, to hear at a higher level. So when you become truly silent in your mind, now you become truly present. And I just gave you an example a couple of minutes ago, but let me expand on that a little bit more is look at yourself this morning, look at yourself in the shower and, you know, go back and go back in that moment. What was going through your mind when you were in the shower this morning? Was it okay? My to-do list, check, check, check. I have to run to the bank. I've got to write some copy. I've got to, to meet Bob at work today. I've got lunch with Susan. I've got to pick the kids up tonight. I've got soccer. I've got blah, 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 blah. Notice there's no silence. There's no peace. And in that moment, you're not even in the present. You're actually living two, three, four, five, six hours from now. This morning in the shower, you were living your entire day and you haven't and hadn't even gotten there yet. And by the way, you know, people, we live in a world where people want everything right now. I mean, look, for example, we have Amazon Prime. You can get anything you want same day. We live in a world of fast food. We as human beings, we want everything now. My intention in this episode is to, to start laying a foundation and start getting you to think about this because it's not, I'm just going to tell you candidly, it's not going to happen right in this moment for you. But you know what? Most people never even have an awareness of what we're talking about and what you're learning in this episode. All right. So let me give you some examples here of how you can start experiencing this. What you could do is a couple of things. Um, as you may or may not already know, I used to be a master hypnotist. I do not do hypnosis anymore. However, when people would come to me, people would say, oh my gosh, you know, doing hypnosis, it is so peaceful. And if you've ever, you, if you've ever been to a hypnotherapist, you know how peaceful it is. And if not, you know what you can do? You can get online this day and age anywhere. There's, there's tons of sites, just Google hypnosis downloads and, or hip, you know, hypnosis audios or MP3s or whatever, and find the hypnosis audio. And what you will notice, even by listening to an MP3, <sighs> they relax you. And many people, the story that I, that I started earlier, many people would become what I call, <laughs> what I call hypno junkies is that they enjoyed the hypnosis so much when I did a, a hypnotic session is they wanted to come back just to go into hypnosis. My bigger reason for mentioning this is because when you learn to relax and quiet the mind, the benefits are that you start opening up to higher awareness. You start up opening up to your full potential and actually even biologically and energetically, your body starts to heal. But that is a very, very powerful place when we get into that silence of mind, because now we're getting into equilibrium with our higher self. 
Okay, so I'm not going to go too much here talking about this part of it, the hypnosis and everything. Um, I already know. I've got, you know, everything kind of uh, sketched out for the next half year. I know that I'm going to start teaching you self-hypnosis in future episodes, and we're going to start talking a lot about the power of the mind. But for right now, today, if you want to actually start experience, experiencing this, just get online and actually Google, you know, self-hypnosis audio or something and listen. And if you're like most people... Even if it's, you know, some small degree, <sighs> you're going to get relaxation and it's going to slow down your mind. And when you start learning to do that, that is the first step to living your full potential by quieting the mind. You know, my brother-in-law and so many of us, I mean, and I include myself, so many of us, we want to make a difference in the world. And here's the thing. Something my brother-in-law said to me, and I wrote this down when he said it a couple of years ago, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through this very slowly because I did write this down. I, I know it by heart, but I wanted to share this with you. He said, to change the world, I must change myself. To change myself, I must stop my world, which is my internal dialogue. When I stop my world, I can change myself, and when I can change myself... I can change the world. Have you noticed as we've been talking through this and you've been listening that it's your internal dialogue? Let's go to full potential for a moment. When you stop talking to yourself, anything that you want becomes possible for you. And that can be anything from spontaneous healing, rapid healing, money, relationships, what, whatever you want, you can have. But if you notice that it's your internal dialogue that stops you from going after, from pursuing, from working towards, from setting your intention, from creating everything that you want, therefore, you do not live your fullest potential because your internal dialogue is talking you out of it. So hopefully you're getting by this point in our time together is that when you have silence of mind, in that moment, anything, anything becomes possible for you. Okay, in transparency here, I want to point out, I have been apprenticing with a shaman for 24 years. And it's been a 24-year exercise in practice in creating internal silence. But I remember the very first time that I met my brother-in-law. And... <laughs> He said this to me, and I already knew he was a shaman before I met him. And he said this to me. He said that, he was talking to me, he said, you think too much. And he says, when you think too much, you make yourself heavy. And when you make yourself heavy, you cannot fly. And what I've learned in my own life, and as you look at your life, I'm sure you can see the same thing. And they partially call it, some people call it, you know, uh, paralysis by analysis. But if you look at your own life, the main reason you have stayed stuck in a lot of places is because you try to think too much and think your way through it. And my brother-in-law once said to me, he said, if you try to think your, your way through life, you're going to be lost. And to prove that to you, and to show you that thinking your way through life, for the most part, doesn't work because how many things have you tried to think through and you're still lost? You can't find your way. The way is silence. All right. So by this point in our time together, you're probably wondering, all right, Jim, I get it. I get it. You know what? You know, I want, I want to live my fullest potential. I understand now what you're saying about silence. And when we're in the silence... We're living our full potential. And how do I do that? Well, let's start with baby steps, all right? So, you know, in the last several podcasts, what I've said, you know, I've said here are your transformational takeaways. So let me give you those takeaways here that I'm going to take them apart. Number one is living your highest potential has nothing to do with your external world and the money that you have and what you create in terms of things and doing. Living your highest potential does have to do 100% with your internal, internal world and your way of being. So 
one something that you can start doing right now is that you can start quieting your external environment. So that's one takeaway, something that you can do. Let's start from the outside in for this particular example. So how can you right now start to quiet your external environment? Turn the noise off. Turn the TV off in the background. Um, what I do in the morning, for example, when I get up in the morning, and there's many podcast episodes on this on how to start our days, is I spend the first couple of hours in silence in my house. And silence also means silence of mind, which means I do not check my phone. I do not check my email. I do not read the news. Why? Because all those things create chatter. That is not silence. So I'm, go I'm going to ask you, let's keep it really simple, is how can you create silence in your external environment in the morning for however long you want, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Like I said, I do it for a couple of hours. That's the way that I choose to live. And I have the, the work flexibility and everything else to be able to do that. But, but what I encourage you first to do is to create an, an you know, external silence. Maybe you actually drive across town today to a meeting and you have the radio off and you actually even get out of your head and you start noticing things around you. So number one is let's reduce the noise in your external environment. Number two is let's start creating silence in your internal environment. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One, I'd mention the self-hypnosis audio. And anyone would be fine, seriously, because anyone's pretty much going to take your analytical mind um, offline, so to speak. Um, air quote, offline with the analytical thinking mind. Next would be the big one. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this is meditation. Meditation, there are so, so many benefits to it. Here's the thing, though. A lot of people say, you know, Jim, I've tried to meditate. I want to meditate, but it's just not easy for me. Meditation comes very hard for me. Why? Because they can't shut down the internal dialogue that we're talking about. So what you, you know, you may try, and I'd recommend go to YouTube and Google binaural, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, binaural, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, binaural beats. And you're going to find, I mean, a load of audios that will come up. Why not put some headphones on? And by the way, there's a science behind this. Basically what they do is they synchronize the right hand, the right hand and the left hand side of the brain. And they bring you down into a state of relaxation like theta waves, which um, is a state of brainwave, brainwave function. I'm going to segue here for a second, guys. The reason I've kind of tripped through this episode a little bit verbally is I have messed up one of my lips right now, and it hurts really bad. So I'm kind of tripping over my own lips right now. Um, it's kind of busted as I'm trying to do this podcast. So that's why you hear me staring a little bit, or uh, my, my inflection might be off a little bit, or my enunciation, because it's not easy actually recording a podcast with a busted lip. All right, back to what we're talking about is binaural beats. What you could do on YouTube is just Google binaural beats, see what comes up. And many times people want like, you know, I don't want to refer just one. And the reason why is because you might see something like some audio that catches your attention that works for you. And by the way, that's using your sense is you see something and you're like, well, I don't know why, why I want this one, but I'm going to pick this one and it works for you. Why? Because that's your sense actually talking even below all of your chatter, pulling you to that particular audio. All right, so the takeaways again is living your highest potential is not external. Living your highest potential is internal. It's all about quieting the mind. So we're going to start with quiet, you know, quieting your environment, and I'll leave that up to you. And then we're going to start with meditation. And if you want, even look up meditation programs or meditation audios or whatever, whatever that you think is going to work for you and just use your sense on that um, is, is look up, you know, a meditation audio and just sit with it and get quiet with it and do it in a place where you can relax and you can let go. All right. So those are your takeaways for right now. And I want you to know that this topic is a huge topic. I mean, why do you think Buddhist monks spend 20 years in a monastery learning to do this? This day and age of technology, you can learn very, very quickly. And you will learn based upon, you know, people will say, well, how long will it take me? 
I don't know. What is your motivation? But what I do want to tell you is this, is that I will be talking a whole lot in future episodes about full potential, silence of mind, living from higher function of mind, using the mind, using the unconscious mind, using the divine mind. All of this will be coming in later episodes. So for now, all we're doing here is getting you to take some baby steps and getting you into action, even though it seems paradoxical, getting you into action with silencing your mind. Okay, so stay tuned and keep listening because in the next episode, you're going to learn how to completely, and I do mean completely, eliminate your biggest fear. Now, for most of you, and that's a very general statement that I made, but for most of you, one of your biggest fears is the fear of judgment. Oh my gosh, I can't put myself out there because what are people going to think of me? Oh no, if I put myself out there, people are going to judge me. So in the next episode, and by the way, your two biggest fears are the fear of abandonment, people are going to reject me, or the fear of inadequacy, I am not good enough. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you a process or a way of thinking. Let me put it that way. We're going to go into a way of thinking that automatically eliminates your fear of judgment. So stay tuned and I will catch you on the next episode. All right. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes, and a good one, by the way. (laughs) I'd be grateful, and through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.